The world up with a word. We can take a nothing day and brighten it up with a tale unheard. Cause we're learning and knowing and growing with welcoming words overflowing. You know it. Come along with me, let's read together. Come along and see what's new together. Come join us. Welcome to the latest episode of Welcome Word. Today we're going to be talking about summer books and we'll be in our very own Gethsemane Garden. Well, here we go. Well, here we are in our Garden of Gethsemane on a beautiful summer day. And it even happens to be the very first day of the Minnesota State Fair. You know what that means. It means footlong hot dogs, cheese curds, sweet Martha's, chocolate chip cookies, and a few more days left of summer reading. So let's begin. I'm going to start with children's books. And the first book I'm going to introduce you to is actually a gift to our library from Maxine Skoll. And the name of the story is called The Everybody Club. In this book, it's a, a, it's a true story, and it was written by a Minnesota author. And she had a girl, her first daughter was named Carissa. Then she had, 20 months later, a boy named Philip, who had uh, multiple sclerosis and could not talk or walk. And then a last son named Todd. And she loved, and Carissa loved Philip so much. But she was kind of sad that he couldn't do all the things that he needed, wanted to do. So she made an everybody club. She made herself president, and Philip and Todd were the first members, along with all her stuffed animals and dolls. And the idea of the club was that everybody is welcome. It's a wonderful book, and I know you'll enjoy sharing it with your child. Our second book also happens to be a gift from Sally Haugen. And this gift is called The Tales of Beetle the Bard by J.K. Rowling. And I think you've heard of her before. But this is wonderful, beautiful stories, lovely, uh, illustrated in a lovely way, that tells more about some of the fairy tales and folk tales of the time of the uh, Harry Potter series. I know that you'll enjoy these beautiful stories. And of course, with children, they'll love to see these lovely pictures. Speaking of lovely pictures, I happen to know the illustrator of this book. It's called The Quilt Maker's Gift. And it has gorgeous colors. There happens to be a quilt maker who lives very, very far away from the city, and she makes the most beautiful quilts. But she will not sell her quilts. She will only give them away to the poor and the homeless. Well, the kingdom of, that, of a nearby village really wants one of her quilts. In fact, he loves to receive gifts all the time. And it, he made his uh, royal duke make a proclamation that every year he would have two birthdays and two Christmases so he could have more gifts. Well, of course, he wants to ask the quilt maker to give him this wonderful gift. But she says, no, they're not meant for you. They're meant for the poor and the homeless. Well, this gets the king very upset. But, she says, if you give every one of your gifts away that you've received, and it will make you smile, then I will give you the quilt. 
Well, the king tries to make things difficult for her. However, he finds out she's absolutely right. Now, my two preschool experts uh, actually uh, recommended a couple of really long books. This next one is called How to Apologize, and it's written by David LaRoche. It won the 2022 Minnesota Fiction Award for picture books. And, you know, how to apologize. Well, now, can there be anything any nicer to learn about when you do something wrong you need to apologize for it? It has this wonderful theme, but lots of humor. And their next selection was just a fun book about dragons. Dragons love tacos, but beware that you don't serve them with a too spicy salsa. Now, even if, if your child is reading a book, it's wonderful to share a book and read aloud even in, in bedtime or any time. And one of my favorite authors for read aloud books happens to be Kate DiCamillo. This is the, Mir the Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane. Edward T Tulane is a stuffed bunny who gets left behind when the family moves. And he has to go out on his own to find love. But he's always been given love, and he's never had any idea how to do that. It's a charming story. And it will be especially interesting, I think, to read with a first or two to a third grader. But Kate DiCamillo has written many books. And my favorite one is her very first, because of Lynn Dixie. It's a terrific read aloud. So if you're looking for a read aloud book to read in the evenings with a child, check on all her books. The next thing we'll do is move over to the uh, adult fiction. Now, this adult fiction book is tremendous. It's going to be unlike any, not anything else that you've ever read. It's called The House in the Cerulean Sea. It happens to be about a man named Linus Baker. And Linus Baker works for the Department of Talented and Mysterious Students. Well, they, they one at a time, the management asks uh, Edward to come in, or asks Linus to come in and take a look at this orphanage this way out on the Cerulean Sea. They think that there are some dangerous children living there. So Linus packs up his things and he goes and he visits the Cerulean Sea Orphanage where he will find the most unusual, wonderful children. It is a, a fairy tale. You can read it. I with a, a student that would be in upper elementary. It's a beautiful tale about being able to accept everyone. Oh, and you might even want to make sure that you have a Kleenex or two. The next book is actually two books that have kind of the same theme. These are books are about relationships between intergenerations. The first one is called The 100 Years of Lorna and Megan, Lonnie and, Ma and Margot. And in this book, they, they, Lenny and Margot are terminally ill, and they live in a special place where they can get lots of care. But Lenny is only 17 years old, and Margot is kind of an outsider in the group, and she's 83 but they meet together in an art class. And they decide to paint pictures about their life. And they make their own museum. And they call it the 100 years of Lenny and Margot because you add up 17 and 83, you have 100 years. 
The next book about interrelationships uh, is between uh, Arthur True Love and a teenager that he meets. Now, Arthur True Love's wife has uh, currently has died, and every day he takes the bus down to the cemetery. He packs his lunch and he sits down and spends his lunch with his uh, wife in and right in the cemetery and he talks to her and talks to her. One day a young woman happens to be listening to Arthur and she's curious and afterwards she speaks with him and she finds out that what he does is such a beautiful thing. Oh and by the way his last name is not true love. His very teenage friend gives him that uh, name. It's a lovely story about two people who are looking for a, and find a found family. The next uh, fictional book is called Dear Mrs. Bird. Now this is an interesting book because it happens to be about a lady who gets a journalism job. And when she comes in to find out about her journalism job, it happens to be that the uh, one of the women, Mrs. Bird, is taking a few, uh, few day, days away for a while. And Mrs. Bird writes an advice column, which is kind of grumpy. And she doesn't really pay attention to what the people are, are writing to her about. Well, this bothers the young lady, so she kind of starts rewriting answers to them, but still calling herself Mrs. Bird. Very interesting how it all works together and a beautiful way to help people feel good. The next book is called The Incredible Winston Brown. This book was recommended to me by our own Gary Smith. And those of you that know Gary well know that he is an avid reader. Winston Brown happens to be a sheriff from a small town in the South. And he has, he, he loves to take care of people. And he finds out about a mysterious young girl. And then the young girl and Winston are taken together and they are helped by all the people in this beautiful community, and you will love it. Again, have a Kleenex ready. Well, we're only one book away from having the entire series about the, Mit about the Mitford series. Those of you that have had the treat of reading the Mitford series know that this is an ongoing tale about people that live in a small town who really care for each other and uh, they take care of each other. And it's just a feel good series. And you'll feel like you really know these people as your own neighbors. Now this book is called The Troublesome Book Woman of Troublesome Creek. This happens to be historical fiction, but it is about a time that really did happen. It ha uh, this, they, there, were people, there were women that rode pack horses, and they were called the Pack Horse Project, and it was sponsored by the WPA, which was, of course, in started by Franklin Delano Roosevelt in the 1930s. And these women would travel around Appalachia to deliver books to people, but this book also happens to have a twist to it. And the twist is that the protagonist in the story happens to have blue blood. And so because of that, she's also an outsider because it's so frowned upon to be a blue blood and you're wondering well what is that and actually it is a, a kind of it's a blood a, a, it's a blood disease where instead of your hemoglobin 
rotating around your body and making your, bo your uh, blood red, it happens to be what's called a metal hemoglobin, which means that there is an enzyme in that special kind of, of hemoglobin that does not release the hemoglobin an oxygen to your blood, and your blood tends up to be kind of a chocolate brown, and then when you look through the faces of people that have this disease, it has a bluish cast. It's a great story. And now we'll be talking about some memoir and nonfiction books. If you have not read The Boys in the Boat, you are in you have a real treat. This story has been out a while and has been embraced by many, many people. It happens to be about nine um, men who are in the uni who are at the University of Wisconsin, and they have their own problems, and it's during during the depression. But they have this wonderful coach who invites them to in, in be a part of a rowing club. And they get to be so good, they will be entering the 1936 Olympics. You'll have to find out what happens. You'll love it. Our next story is called The Salt Path. And I'm going to introduce you to this story by reading just a little bit of the introduction. I was under the stairs when I decided to walk. In that moment, I hadn't really considered the 630 miles with a rucksack, rucksack on my back. I hadn't thought about how I could even afford to do it or that I'd be wildly camping for nearly 100 nights, or what I would even do afterwards. I hadn't told my partner of 32 years that he was coming with me. Because you see, we were lost. We had lost everything. We had lost our court case, lost the house, and lost ourselves and lost the farm. And every, and, and I reached out to lift up a box. And out of the box was every painful action that brought us here. We decided to crawl out from under the stairs. Together? Always, I said. And we stood at the, at the front door with the lawyers ready to change the locks and to keep us out of our house that we have lived forever. We walked through that door, we would never come back. So we held our hands and we walked into the light. So this is a couple that has lost everything. They have no place to go. So they decide that they are going to walk along the salt path, which is 600 miles around this lovely area uh, in, yeah, up in the United Kingdom. They meet lots of wonderful people. This next story also is excellent, and it's been out for a while, but you may have missed it. It's called Rocket Boys. And you may have seen the, uh, the film called Red October. That was made from the Rocket Boys. And the Rocket Boys is a story about eight, oh, about six young men during the 1950s and 1960s that want to build a better rocket because of course the Russians had just had, had traveled into space and they want to travel into space. It's a great, great story. It's a coming of age, and it's about, it takes place in a mining town, and you will, again, it's a great story. Written by the man, Homer Hickam, who is one of, the, one of those boys in the book, and it's his memoir. Our 
Our next story is called The Beauty of Dust by Frank Rooney. Frank Rooney is a editor in the, in, in the, for the New York Times, and he this is what happened to him. They say that death comes like thief in the night, but other calamities happen too. The affliction that stole my vision, or at, at least a big chunk of it, did so as I slept. I went to bed seeing the world one way, and I woke up seeing it another way. What happened to, to Frank was that it was a, a rare stroke that cut off some of the blood to one of his optic nerves. So when he woke up the next day, he would, could not see out of that eye. And he found out that because of that, his vision would be forever blinded in that one eye. Through a series of doctor visits, getting to know people, he finally discovered that even though his vision was blurred, his other visions were sharpened. Beautiful story about a man and his affliction. And my last memoir is called Driving Miss Daisy. And again, I'm going to read just a part of this so that you get the idea about this book. Well, uh, Miss Daisy's children took her to the doctor. So as we sat in that crammed ex 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 examination room with a gynecologist, a handsome man in his 30s, the doctor told us what we already knew, that Norma had a cancerous mass on her uterus. From his perch at the edge of the table, he looked down at Norma, who was sitting in the hospital wheelchair, and then launched into this sentence. So we're going to schedule you for a hysterectomy, then radiation, and then chemotherapy and you will recover in a rehabilitation facility, and it will likely take you a few months to heal. Although he didn't give her any options, he did ask her what she would like to do. Miss Norma looked him in the eyes and said with as much conviction as she could muster, I'm 90 years old, and I'm going to hit the road with my children. Well, are we being responsible, Tim asked. This approach seemed natural to us, but we don't always, always live within the rules. What do you think, doctor? No, said the doctor, it's not irresponsible. There's no guarantee that she'd survive the surgery. If she did, it would be, she'd be in intensive care. And as doctors, we see all these kinds of things every day and if I were her, I'd want to be in that motor home too. So off they go in the motor home with the dog traveling all across the United States and Miss Norma happens to make a big impact upon all she needs. Thank you for visiting with Welcome Word. I look forward to seeing you next time.